Good morning! Welcome back to Granted Gardens. My name is Melissa. It is a beautiful day and I'm taking full advantage of it and I'm outside in the garden. Today I'm going to be working on clearing up this garden space, specifically getting the walkways cleared out, get some of these um, weeds cleared out and maybe attempt to remulch this today. Gonna get into this today. Thought I'd break out the camera, kind of bring you guys along for the ride so you can see what kind of stuff I'm working on this time of the year. Um, but I also wanted to kind of break the camera out today because I think, I think it's time. I think it's time for a chat. So I assume the majority of you are here and watch our channel because you're interested in things like homesteading and growing your own food. With that being said, um, you shouldn't, unless you're living under a total rock, uh, the concept of a potential food shortage and or current food shortage that we're experiencing shouldn't be something new and unheard of to you. If you are not growing your own food of some sort, what are you waiting for? Now, I understand that a lot of people are in different situations and sometimes they'll look at me and say, you know, Melissa, well, I don't have the means of having a greenhouse. I don't have a lot of space in my backyard that I can have multiple gardens to grow food. You don't need it. We have shared throughout the past three, four years now, uh, our garden setup and the idea that we've got a lot of different stuff going on, but by far one of the most successful parts of our garden has always been on the deck. The stuff that we're growing in pots, we tend to get a really massive harvest out of that, and it's also the area that gets the most sunlight throughout the day, so everything usually does really well up there. So you do not need a ton of space in order to grow food. However, if you do have space to put in a garden and you don't currently have a garden set up what are you waiting for uh, obviously like I said if you're here you're interested in this stuff this is something that inspires you and that alone should be enough of a reason to start a garden now if you are inspired by this stuff and you're also living through the current area the current situation that we've been living in what has been the last two years of our lives. Because nowadays we're living through a time in our lives where we can make the trip to the grocery store, but we, it may not have what we're going there for. And I'm not entirely convinced that that's gonna be getting better anytime soon. I'm not here to put fear in your heart at all. However, I am gonna sit here and tell you that if this is something you're interested in, you have the available space, now is the time to do it. A lot of people ask me, you know, Melissa, what are you guys doing differently this year than you did last year or the year before that with the way that um, the world is going? And in all honesty, uh, we're not doing too much different. We've been blessed enough to have started this journey years before it became cool is my concept. Years before um, people started doing it as a means of survival potentially instead of just doing it because it was something they enjoyed doing. Um, Tyler and I, we just genuinely enjoy doing this and so we started little by little and we did a little piece at a time and we've built what we have now. This is not something you can do overnight. This is not something you can do in one season. So something new that we are doing this year, we added two smaller beds um, and then we just really started focusing on production as far as what plants we're planting. So we're planting heavily for production this year. Uh, we don't have too many things that are just there for to be pretty. Most of the stuff that we are growing from a vegetable standpoint is there because we know it does well, we know it produces a lot, and we plan on putting it up. So kind of going back to the concept of, okay, Melissa, you know, I've never done this before. I'm really interested in starting this year. I wanna grow food that I can potentially supplement my grocery bill um, or potentially have something sustainable that I can go out to the garden and pick for a meal for my family. And so I want to review a few things that we're planning on plant planting this year to provide us with more of a meal um, in the garden. One of those things that I'm going to heavily stress is going to be butternut squash. There is something like there's so much that you can do with a butternut squash. And quite frankly, the plants that we have had have been extremely prolific. Um, they can grow, they do vine, so you need to have some sort of space for it. Um, but what we did was we just started planting them along the fence line and just letting them go. And we had a great harvest of butternut squash last year. Another thing, zucchini. Zucchini is by far one of my most favorite things to grow because it is so versatile 
versatile. You can do so much with zucchini. Um, some of the things we like doing are like zucchini boats. Um, additionally, one thing that we grew last year that was a first for me was spaghetti squash. Wasn't my favorite, wasn't my favorite but, cause I love pasta, but uh, to be honest with you, if you're going to feed a small family, one spaghetti squash is enough for a whole meal. You can just scoop that out, you know, throw it in a pot, put in some spaghetti sauce at the very least, and you've got a meal. Uh, it's super, super easy and definitely fills the belly. The other thing that we're really focusing on this year is green beans. We're gonna be growing a ton of different kinds of green beans. And the reason for that was because I canned green beans for the first time last year. And I had canned my green beans. I had like bush beans, I had some noodle beans, I had some um, of Tyler's, oh, what are they, dragon something, snake tongue, something like that. Uh, I can, I never, I always forget. But we had kind of concocted a mix of all these different beans into these jars and I canned them and I was like not sure that they were going to turn out too good because they were all different. They were perfect. They were absolutely delicious and so beans is another thing that we're going to be doing a lot of this year. Now something that I also want you guys to keep in mind is that if you don't have the space to grow enough to both supplement a grocery build during the summertime and put food away, you have other options, okay? So there are a few things that Tyler and I have come to the conclusion we're going to outsource. Um, one of them being our canning tomatoes. So last year we ordered um, seconds, which is essentially, they usually come in bulk containers and essentially they're the tomatoes that have some sort of bruising to them or a cut or a nick or something. They're not pretty and so they don't want to set them out to sell them individually at market so you can buy seconds from your local farmer. So we bought a bunch of those, boxes of those, and those are what we canned and put up last year as opposed to having to grow a ton of tomatoes in the garden beds here in the backyard and have to have an abundance enough to not only eat fresh but to also put away. We just don't have the space here to grow as many tomatoes as we would want to put away. So that's gonna be something we're gonna do this year is we are still growing tomatoes here on the homestead, but those are going to be designed to eat uh, fresh, uh, you know, on salads or whatnot. And then as far as our canning tomatoes go, we're gonna outsource that and purchase it from a local farmer. This is something that you can do with everything. We did it last year with corn. We've tried growing corn here multiple times in multiple different ways and it just doesn't pan out. We, we don't have the space to do corn. Um, so that's something that I buy in bulk from our farmer and I can that. So keep in mind that you have options. Just because you don't have enough space to grow something on a large scale, scale where you can start canning stuff, it doesn't mean that you just shouldn't grow a garden at all. It's important to have something growing in your yard that if you're hungry, you can go out and pick and use. These suggestions are just suggestions based off of what I know we like and what we eat. If there's something that I mentioned in here that you absolutely despise, don't grow it. <laughs> Like find a, find a replacement, but I'm just saying that some of these things that I'm suggesting, I have just noticed I can do a lot with. I wanted to see just how much I could do with the stuff that we were growing in the, in the backyard. And so this was something I'm really passionate about. I love the concept of being able to grow your own food. I love being able to walk out here and pick stuff and make a meal out of it. But the problem is, is that you can grow all kinds of stuff. If you don't know how to cook it, it's no good to you. Another thing to consider if you've got enough space and your area allows is to get chickens. So it's really great for you to be able to grow your own food, but don't underestimate the ability to grow your own eggs. Eggs and chickens are a great resource of food, especially right now when we're seeing a lot of shortages of those two things in the grocery store. So it's very simple. You really don't even need a setup quite as big as ours. Uh, you can get a small setup, a couple of hens, and then you can be in eggs throughout the year and you know that you have that resource to rely on if the grocery store is failing you. Another thing that's really simple to grow and takes very little space is mushrooms. Mushrooms are a great opportunity for you to provide substance to your family um, without having to raise animals or have a large space to do a garden. Now, these logs are, we've got mushrooms growing in them. We just did them recently, so they're not too far along. 
But what's great about mushrooms is that even in a time where meat may not be available, mushrooms are a great meat substitute from a texture, kind of a flavor. So this is a great resource to have if the grocery store is failing you and you really need something something to put in your family's belly that's gonna fill them up and be healthy for them. Another thing that I highly suggest that you do is be familiar with your property and the properties around you. Now, I'm not saying go take stuff out of your neighbor's yard. But what I am saying is just be familiar with the different kinds of plants, um, with the different kinds of plants that grow naturally in your area. Uh, so for example, if you have, if you know that there's a fruit tree that's down the road, um, or if you know that you grow honeysuckle in your backyard, or maybe blackberries, um, those are just some things that I know of off the top of my head in our area. <laughs> Um, your area might look very different, but walk around and identify different plants. Know what they are and what they can be used for so that if you are ever in a situation where you can't get to the grocery store or perhaps even the doctor's office, um, you'll have resources available to you that you can use. So up until this point, we have talked specifically about offering food for your family that you can grow in your backyard. Another thing that I really suggest doing is having an herb garden. An herb garden does not take up much space at all. This is my herb garden. It does not look very pretty right now because it's in a transitional state. However, I have a ton of herbs available to me in this herb garden. The idea is, is that we use them a lot for cooking. I use them for teas, and then we also have them available for medicinal purposes. So if something does happen, or we get sick, or we need some kind of care, we know about the herbs that we have growing right here. We know about all that they're capable of healing, all that they're capable of doing. Um, I would say start with a very small garden. Start with maybe one or two herbs, and just grow those for the first year and do research on what they can be used for and what their benefits are, and then kind of sprawl out from there. Now, if you live in a very, very small community where you have n hardly a backyard at all, you have the ability to grow one garden bed. Team up with your neighbors. Get to know the people that live around you. Maybe you guys can grow one thing, they can grow another, and then you all can trade, and that way you have access to all of those resources instead of trying to cram a bunch of resources into just your space. I'm really blessed that Tyler and I got into this when we did and that we are as far along as we are over the last handful of years. However, if you're still st just starting out, please just do it. Start somewhere. Start small. Pick one or two different plants. Grow them. Get to know them. You know, initially I would always tell people pick one or two plants and start with it. With the way that the world is right now though, I would say maybe double that. <laughs> have something available to you. I love the idea of teaming up with a community. And if you grow one or two plants and then your neighbor grows one or two plants and the person across the street grows one or two plants and you share all of this stuff, then you have access to more resources. And that is what it's all about. If you're not growing a garden, start one. Start one today. Go get your hands on some wood. I'll be honest with you, this wood was all free. It was all free. It's not the greatest thing, it's not perfect, but it's gonna work and our goal was to grow more food this year. And so sometimes you just use what you can get, right? Sometimes it's not perfect, sometimes it's not the ultimate wood, sometimes it's not, you know, the best uh, mulch or sometimes maybe it's not the greatest compost. Sometimes you just use what you have and that is what I'm encouraging you to do right now. Take whatever you can get your hands on and start a garden. Have food growing in your property that you are responsible for. Today is the day, folks. It ain't gonna get any better. While you're going through that process, feel free to go back and watch some of our older videos and watch us as we were learning and going through those phases because they're great videos. Um, definitely we learned a lot and hopefully you guys will too. As always, thank you so much for watching and we look forward to sharing more with you soon.